a, a fight that I don't know, uh, you know, necessarily anybody was expecting to see or was calling for or anything like that. So I guess what was your thought when, when this was the fight that was announced? Um, I don't know. Like, I thought about it because uh, I know we haven't fought in a while. And I was like, I'll go ahead and take it. I mean, we were supposed to fight a couple years back anyways. And uh, I remember specifically that fight because going flying to Japan, I was on a plane I didn't have an opponent. That's crazy. When it was brought up, any part of you say, are we, are we doing it at heavyweight? Can we, can we stay there? Uh, nah. Nah, man. You know, as much as I like dip and dab in the heavyweight division and whatnot, it's, it's not for me. So, for sure, light heavyweight moving forward? Oh, yeah, definitely. Did it re require any changes? I know you just kind of dabbled there briefly and you had the, the, the miss, but did it require any changes for you to kind of get ready? It looked like, like you were working on your cardio a lot this time, this camp around. Uh, definitely, definitely. Um, it didn't require a lot, but, I mean, with the, with the heavyweight division, like, they hit hard. <laughs> they hit hard. But also, too, like, some of the shots I give the heavyweights, you know, a lot of two or five pounders won't be able to take it. Right. Uh, in preparing, I mean, is there any sense in going back and watching a fight from eight years ago, or is it just completely pointless? Uh, it's pretty much pointless. You know, people change, fighters change, and, you know, your style change over time. So, you know, my me fighting eight years ago is completely different than me now. So. Is it still, I mean, Shogun's a legend, right? I mean, is it still kind of, I mean, you are, you, you've done it before, and obviously, man, you've been around the game for a long time, but is it still special to fight a, a guy like that? Definitely. I mean, he, like I tell, I told people before, like, you know, I was a Shogun fan before I started fighting. You know, my first fights watching Shogun back in Pride and stuff, and, you know, now to fight him one time and beat him, and, you know, to do it again is going to be like, yeah, it's going to be a staple. Nice. Last thing for me, any part of you consider like bringing a, like walking in with a skateboard or something like that? Man, you know, what was crazy about that clip was I watched that like eight times and I did not know what's going on. But uh, I might think about kind of skating my way in there. <laughs> Lint, uh, material off. Um, it sounds like this might be Shogun's final fight. Uh, I know he wanted to do it in Brazil where this card was kind of rumored to be originally. Uh, what does it kind of mean to you as you kind of expressed your admiration for him to potentially be that final opponent for him? Uh, he said, okay, say that again. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Um, it sounds like this might be Shogun's final fight. I know this was originally talked about maybe being in Brazil, this card. Um, I know you just expressed kind of your admiration for him and said beating him again would be a staple. So to be his final opponent, potentially, what does that mean to you? I guess it sucks for him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I understand uh, you, you want to go out on top or whatnot, but at the end of the day, it's just like I'm trying to make another statement. And I think I'm – and I don't think – Anybody that ever fought Shogun made a statement back to back like that. And uh, that's what I'm trying to do. That's what I'm going to do. Do you go in with the mindset, like, I want to one-up that previous performance? It was almost flawless the last time. So is there, there, is there a way to one-up it? Uh, it can always be better. It can always be better. Yeah. Over here, OSB. Uh, you had said that the heavyweight division, you kind of realized it's not for you. I just wonder for your, you, you personally, like, how did you feel like your own body performed with the exercise and that sort of thing? Are you talking about the heavyweight division? Yeah. It's different when I've been fighting at 205 for so long than after you go up there. Um, like, sometimes you can train at that weight, but it's different, tr like, actually fighting at that weight, you know. Um, you feel I can feel good training at that weight, but when somebody else is pretty much – you know, your size and a lot of times bigger than you are, it becomes a lot different just because over time, like, you can you can move a two or five pounder, you can move them around, like, pretty much easily. But, you know, 20, 30 pounds, that makes a big difference, especially when you walk around. Like, I think when I fought, you know, Ben, I was like 238, and he was the next day, he was, what, 270, 280? That's a lot of difference. I mean, even going, even if you watch the fight between – you know, Israel and Jan, like, that was a 20-pound difference, and that made a big difference. So people don't realize, like, pounds goes a long way. Did you personally, like, did you feel your body carrying that extra weight? Like, did you Oh, yeah. Feel oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, it's different when you try to move somebody and be like, okay, there's a lot of mass. Like, especially when you try to wrap your arms around somebody and be like, okay, my fingers are barely touching. As in the 205 division, you know, I can – almost lock wrist to wrist. Yeah. 
uh, I mean, regarding the Shogun fight, the first one was like 34 seconds or something. Like, is there a weird pressure for you to almost like t- try to top yourself? Like, how do you approach a fight like that? Um, just just go in there and do what I know how to do. Like, even the first time I fought him, it was on a on eight days notice. You know, I got moved up to the main event. And, you know, I was like, you know what? I'm coming. He's coming. Uh, I'm going down to Brazil. I got nothing to lose. And, you know, I had all the Brazilian fans on my back. So, you know, I went out there and made the crowd extremely quiet. And then I wonder just, you know, you were, you were being asked about it and you said sucks for him. The, the fact that this might be his retirement fight and he's doing it against you. It almost feels like there's like a hesitance or a reticence about like, I don't, I don't know how to phrase it, but like sending sending a legend like this out I, in a bad moment. It's crazy because, you know, the first time I fought him and I think I was the first guy to actually ever put him away in that fashion. And I was thinking to myself like, man, he's a legend in the sport. But at the end of the day, he's just like, you know, we're competitors and whatnot. And, you know, once that octagon locked on, he, the man across the cage is like, I, I'm just going to give you a beat down. So, because I know he's going to try to do the same thing to me. I mean, he's trying to go out on top, too. So, if he had an opportunity to sweep me up, sweep me up I'm sure he's going to do it. So, I'm just going to beat him to that punch. Well, then last thing from me, just unrelated to this fight, but obviously the card, the main event, I think is one of the most heavily anticipated fights of the year, Gaethje. And Oliver, I'm just curious for your thoughts. How do you see that going and your excitement for it? Gaethje's a madman. He's going to keep on coming forward and apply pressure. Charles Oliveira is the same way, too. Charles Oliveira got them good uh, tip kicks to the body that will slow down a lot of people and whatnot. And he stands straight up almost like a Muay Thai fighter because he's not worried about getting taken down because he's just he was that of. Everybody knows it. Um, it's going to be crazy, man. Like, I was, t- I was just talking to somebody about the, you know, the, the pay-per-view card. I mean, if you line up within the pay-per-view card, how many guys topped off of bonuses or whatnot? You know, I'm one of the lower tier guys with bonuses and stuff, and I felt like I did pretty good with bonuses in my career. So it's, it's this card right here, just looking at it, I'm like, man, it's going to be pretty hard for me to get a bonus, but I'm going to try to work on it. Uh, hi, Vince, over here to your left. Um, you know, being a former heavyweight, so what advice would you have to give to John Jones as he makes a jump up to heavyweight and potentially challenges for the interim title against Stipe? Um, when you're that big, the way you think you're going to move is not going to be that of. Um, especially, like, uh, I think it's different. You can feel like that in practice, but if the body operates in a high-stress situation, which – you know, somebody's trying to clean your clock off. So, um, and, and it's different, too. It's like uh, those guys I used to moving around that way, they've been in that weight class for a while. Like, you know, I, I did it playing football, and I remember doing it playing football. It hurt, you know, keeping my weight up that much playing football. And, you know, what mixed martial arts is, is me getting up there. I can feel like I'm in shape, but it still hurts either way. Yeah. You're a tad bit slower. You can be stronger. You could think you're moving fast, but – you, you're a tad bit slower. Do you think John Jones will be a double champion? There's a possibility. I mean, he's been in the game for so long. Like his, especially the way he goes into a fight, like the mindset, the kind of like a tactician or whatnot. Like he's really good at imposing like different strategies on people, and you know he's really good at changing styles too. So. OSB over here. Uh, back to what you were saying about the bonuses. The 10 fighters on the main card have a combined 195 UFC fights, 122 UFC wins, and 90 finishes, 99 bonuses. So can you describe what it feels like to be in this position, being part of uh, what has the potential to be a historical UFC event? Um, ish. <laughs> I mean, it's gonna, the bonus is going to be you, – you don't understand. Like, a lot of times when the fighters go into a card, they'll look at the card up and down and be like, oh – I can possibly get a bonus. This card is going to be like, man, it's going to be really hard. But at the end of the day, all I care about is getting my hand raised at the end of, at the end of the night. So I'm cool with that. Um, so as long as I'm part of that historic moment, I'm good. And uh, lastly, how is this fight camp for Rua differed, if at all, from your previous two camps for Jamal Hill and Tanner? Um, me just just got locked in a lot of focus this time. Um, I was actually uh, – I came out the next two weeks early. Um, 
now that at the PI, make sure everything is on point. Um, got a good couple of training sessions at uh, um, Couture with a couple of those guys over there. So I um, feel really, really good. Um, came back, my, like met my coach over here. We were working out last night. And he was like, man, you're looking really, you're looking real sharp. So everything came to, everything's coming to. So I'm feeling really good.